So last time we were able to take our voiceless voice deck to locals and we were able to get first place and it felt really great and I wanted to take voiceless voice back again. Uh, but this time I did do some changes to the deck and added a different engine into here. I've been watching a couple videos, seeing some players play different uh, engines into the deck, experimenting with a little bit. And uh, I took this version to, to locals and uh, I'll, I'll talk about mostly uh, all of it at the end, like what my overall thoughts were for it. But let's go into the updated deck profile, starting off with three low. Yeah, I did get the third low. I did order it. It came out a couple days after that video was posted. Um, and then after the video was uh, filmed, actually, because I posted it way later. Then I had the three Diviners, the one Trias, uh, three Saphira. Uh, one Cerevis, two Skull Guardians, uh, two Cerevis, three Barriers, two Prayers, and one uh, Radiance. So basically, very, very uh, standard um, voiceless cards. That's 21 cards right there for just a voiceless engine, if you want to call it an engine. And then the uh, the things I decided to put in here was the branded package. Yeah, so I've been watching a couple of decks, and they ran the branded package. But I will say, I do not have Sanctifier. I ordered that thing a long time ago, so it hasn't came in yet. And... Uh, I don't know. I was trying to do the Jalgen lock, but it didn't work out. So I did see other decks that did not play that version, and I opted to play that one instead. And it was uh, it was interesting. So we'll talk about that at the near the end. Uh, so we did have those. Then we have the three pot of prosperities. I put a uh, pre prep to two. Um, I was thinking like two and two, but I ended up just doing three pots of two of these, and then one call by the grave. And lastly, hand traps. I did take out a. Uh, Ash Blossom, so I only have the three Drone Logs, three Nibiru, and three Infinite Permanents. With uh, Ash Blossom, it's like, against Snake Guys, they can make it uh, the Charmer and just take it, and I just kind of didn't want to do that. And I think Drone Lopper kind of hurts a little bit more here and there, so there's that. Then onto the extra deck, we have the one Guru Wing, one Mud Dragon, one Predator Plant, one Starving Venom for our Super Poly targets. Then we have the one Elder Entity, and then for our Branded package, we have the two Albion, the two Mirror Jade, and then the one Lubelion. Uh, a lot of fusions, so that's five, I'm uh, sorry, ten right there. So uh, it's mostly those. I run the Dino Mundo. Relinquished Anima, this did finally come in. Uh, one IP Masquerina, mostly because I don't have a um, SP Little Knight. I don't have one, so I just ran this one in case I do go for the Triple Tactics Talent thing. And if anything, I can make this during my opponent's turn and just, I'm sorry, make it and then on my opponent's turn go for Dino Mundo, maybe. I don't really know. Then the one uh, Typhon, and then the one Herald, uh, Herald of the Arc Light. So that's it for the extra deck. On to the side deck really quickly. We have the three ghosts, and I was able to pick up a third copy of Triple Tactics Talent from my buddy Aaron, and I also got a Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph Dragon, so shout out to Aaron for hooking me up with these. And then uh, I really wanted to play three of them, and luckily it was in the same rarity, so that was pretty cool. Uh, three Super Polys, three Evenlies, and then three... Uh, some limit so that is it for the deck profile of this branded voiceless and i ended up taking this to locals there was a total of three rounds i recorded two of them the other one i didn't and i did explain it after immediately right after the round so i will uh you know you'll see that so with that let's get into the first game of the first round of the tournament for round one, we play against our buddy Aaron, and full disclaimer, this is his first time actually playing the Snake Eyes Fire King deck, so he is going to be making a couple of, like, misplays and a couple of, like, questionable, like, decisions, sort of, so uh, bear bear with him on this. He's still learning. This is the first time actually playing the deck out here, and um, he's uh, he doing uh, some interesting plays, but it's funny because I had an infinite permanence, and then he just drops the uh, cross out designator, but that's a good thing I ended up baiting that because I have a Nibiru in my hand so i'm just thinking like okay that's cool i'm just gonna wait until i have uh until the near like the ending of his turn to actually use nibiru and um i think he actually let it slip too later that he had another cross out because they thought he could use it again um but you know it, that's not how cross out works but yeah he's setting up uh his play here and you know he did make some questionable decisions there because like he placed like some monsters in his spell and trap zone from the temple and then uh popular you're supposed to send like popular and i think ash to the graveyard to summon out something else so you can have another monster out on your field so you can do some link plays but um yeah uh, he's just uh trying to like figure out how to play it because like i said this is the first time actually playing the deck in uh locals and then uh he goes into the um he goes into the Salaman grade and he uses the Flame Burst, comes out the two monsters. And this is when I decided to do the Nibiru because I figured, let me just do it now. And I place it across from an extra monster zone. So, so in the same column as one, so I can go into a Relinquished Anima if I need to. And uh, it becomes my turn. I activate uh, my pre-preparation rights, but he has the Ash Blossom. And then from there, I just uh, do my plays. I had Sapphira, uh, Sapphira and then 
searched out, you know, the um, Skull Guardian. I summoned out my low, and then I'm going to use, like, low eventually to summon out, um, to summon out the relinquished anima and then it's like i'm trying to just like destroy his cards because i believe his field spell can at least special summon out one of the monsters in the spell trap zone but he hasn't done that yet i was kind of curious as to why he didn't do it maybe he just didn't know so i ended up popping the field spell and then that's why i take the relinquished anima with relinquished anima and just able to attack over for game so i got game one then we go into game two my opponent is playing a little bit better and this is actually where he utilizes the uh snake i'm sorry the uh fire king engine with the deck and he summons out um he summons out Ponyx, and then he gets out the Sanctuary, gets Fire King Island, has the Garunix. But I ended up trying to negate Garunix, and I, I've kind of, I don't know why, I just ended up figuring negate Garunix so he doesn't set about anything else. And then from there, uh, he's still trying to figure out how to do like some other plays here, and he goes into the Salamangrate again, and summons out the two monsters from the graveyard, searches out, uh, searches back a uh, Popular, and then goes into the IP Mascarena, links us off to uh, the uh, Promethean. Uh, goes into the Flame Burge, and then he goes into that rank four. I can't remember what the name of it's called, but uh, yeah, he goes into that rank four there, and then uh, sets two has IP Mascarena because the Flame Burge's effect in the uh, Monster Field Zone, so he puts it in the Spell Trap Zone. And thankfully, I opened up with a Super Polymerization, and he has two Fire Monsters out on my field, so I was able to activate Super Poly to fuse those into a Mud Dragon, and that was like that was really good. So I'm glad that he actually did that. But now I have to worry about that Promethean. I don't have to worry about the Promethean because he the Flame Burge uh, didn't activate because uh, he didn't have two in the graveyard. Or I think he did, but or no, Ponix, I think, went back to his hand. And then um, from there, I'm just setting up my plays to see what I could do there. But he did have the Kirin in his hand, so he was able to pop that, summon out Garunix. But he forgot to summon out, I'm sorry, not Garunix, Ponix, but he forgot to summon out Garunix from his graveyard. So that gave me a bit of a more advantage right there until like he eventually uh, would remember it, though, later. Um so I'm trying to go to my plays and try to like cautiously destroy his stuff and like I'm trying to uh, figure out a way if I could get through this uh, here because I want to try to do like an OTK play and I go into the Relinquish Anima to uh, to take that but he uses the Promethean in his graveyard to pop Ponix and my Relinquish Anima um, and then from that um, he was able to set off Garunix now in his uh, graveyard to summon it out. He, he could only pop Kirin, and he gave it 1,200 attack points, but that's actually what I needed because I had a triple tactics talent in my hand, so I'm going to take that Garunix uh, from his field so I can actually dish out a lot more damage, and that's actually what ended up winning the game there, so I was just able to press for a lot of damage and get in game two against my buddy Aaron uh, because on the next turn, he just drew and decided to scoop from there. But yeah, it was an interesting uh, game to go, and once he gets a lot better with the deck, I know he's going to do a lot more good combos, and then he's going to uh, evolve a little bit more with the deck. So it was a good... Uh, first round uh, against my buddy Aaron and his Snake Eyes deck. Uh, the Snake Eyes Fire King deck, at least. So, yeah. So, we just wrapped up round two. We played against Runic Stun with a lot of uh, <laughs> trying to mill my deck. Unfortunately, I did not record uh, this match just because I actually needed my phone on me when I was uh, conversating back and forth with uh, my brother so I actually needed my phone on me so let me uh, give you the rundown of what happened uh game one <laughs> I go first and all I open up with is basically brand diffusion I activated that and I eventually just went into mirror jade and set a uh, infinite impermanence so then became my opponent's turn and he ended up popping my mirror jade he popped back my back row banished a bunch of cards from my deck and um I believe he had the field spell and was just like he was setting some pretty good advantages too because he had a he had like everything because he negated my low on the next turn and banished more cards at the top of my deck and then recycled from his graveyard and it was just to the point where like so many turns uh, not so many turns but like a couple turns went by and he just kept banishing more and more cards from our deck i was like you know what let's go to game two um so we'll go to game two i have a better opening board and i have my uh i have my low i have my skull guardian and i have um the uh, barrier and i have an ip mascarena thinking maybe if he goes into the field spell i can go into the uh uh, the Dino Mundo, and then just try to bounce back anything in case if I haven't stopped any type of negations uh, after I use Call Guardians effect. And he did try to use the uh, Runic cards on my monsters, but the thing is with Barrier on my field, they cannot be targeted, so he had to negate my IP Mascarena instead. And then um, it, ca it came to a point where just basically I ended up winning because I just went and uh, was able to do a lot more damage, and um, I ended up negating something. I can't remember what it was. I think I negated... No, he summoned, actually he used a runic spell card. He brought out the level nine runic. I can't remember the name of it is, but since you can't target any of my lights, he had to banish a 
my IP Mascarena, and from that I had two Skull, Gar Skull Guardians on my field, and they both had 41 because I had low on my field, and I just attacked for game. And then we go into game three, my opponent has Messenger of Peace, and I'm like, oh crap, okay, because I don't have much back row disruption. That's the difficult part that I had, is that I had no back row disruption, I had no Lightning Storms, no Harpy's Feather Duster, so it was a really tough call, and both of my games, um, Radiance kept getting banished. So that was really difficult to get over, but thankfully I opened up a barrier in my hand and I had low and I'm sorry, I had uh, Diviner, the Herald, and I normal Diviner sent uh, Trias and I was able to do my entire play, no disruptions. Um, and I had Skull Guardian, low, Radiance, barrier. I think I had something else I can't remember, but um, <laughs> it was actually uh, pretty, pretty good. Um, and my opponent went first, I'm sorry, my opponent went first and he had card destruction, scarred an entire hand and it actually gave me a better hand. And then um, he set, I think, like two cards or something. And then he proceeded to pass. And then that's when I did my plays. I did my combo boards. And um, I was just able to reduce a lot more damage at that point because I had I had something else. I can't remember what I had, but I was able to just attack and OTK him on that turn. I had Skull Guardian, Trius. Uh, I had two low at one point. Oh, no, I have a Cerevis. I have the Ritual Cerevis monster. And I was just able to... Uh, deal a, a damage to zero so i ended up getting game three and that duel was insane i really wish i could have recorded that but i had to had to have my phone on me uh i'll try to record the other matches and um uh, uh just i apologize for that but it was a really insane match i really wish i could have recorded it and it just made me like think that i really need to side that back row disruption uh, again because of situations like this and uh yeah that was an eye opener but it was a really cool duel i'm not gonna lie it was fun uh, I need uh, to make Red Fusion, summon uh, Albion, summon to the field. Uh, oh, you won the rap? Oh, 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 you did, yeah, I remember calling your name, but I don't know. Why did you do three rounds? Did you do three rounds? Alright, round three, sorry, it's rough! We just, we just, we have... For the third and final round, we play against our buddy Geo, and he's playing uh, Voiceless Voice as well. So this is actually a mirror match, and I do apologize for the camera angle here, but you are going to be seeing some cards getting cut off. So I'll try to explain it as best as I can, but some things are going to be cut off, all right? So uh, I, try, I do the Sephira, I get out the... Um, the Skull Guardian, and I do some a couple of plays there, and he is able to negate the Skull Guardian, so I was not able to search out low because I don't have a low. Uh, I realized I should have used Brand Diffusion a little bit earlier, so that way I could have set up low in my graveyard, but live and learn there, so I was just able to use Brand Diffusion to go into a Mirror Jade, and uh, Skull Guardian is just there because it doesn't have any negation, it only has 2050. So when it comes to my opponent's turn, he has low. Uh, he sets up Barrier and Barrier to search, I believe, Seth Fur No, he searches out the uh, Skull Guardian, and then... Uh, he has the ritual spell card. Uh, he hards rituals into it. And then um, I'm dumb here. I use Mirror Jade to banish his uh, Skull Guardian. But it, it sets up the ritual spell card in the graveyard anyways. And he summons out another Skull Guardian. So I was just like uh yeah I I that was so dumb of me. I, I like blinked out there for a bit. And then um from there, he, you know, he brought back low as well. And uh, he searched out Cerevis, and then he destroyed my my Skull Guardian. And then uh, when it became my turn, um, didn't really have much to, like, try to do because, like, my hand was a little bad. I didn't have barrier. I didn't have any type of ways of ritual summoning. So I just switched Mirror Jade to defense and proceeded to pass. And then when it became uh, his turn, um, he had a barrier, searched out low again, and then activated the ritual spell card again, summoned out Cerevis. Or, or no, does he not summon out Cerevis? Um, oh yeah, he tributes something else, summons out Cerevis, brings back low, and then uh, uses low to add brilliance, links those two off together, go to Dino Mundo, and then that's where he bounces the Mirror Jade. I try to use Mirror Jade to banish, uh, but, and then to get rid of something, but I think he neg he negates it with the Skull Guardian, and just proceeds to attack and deal a lot of damage, and that just ended up getting game one. So it was a bit rough for me on that one with that part. But then it goes to game two. I open up a lot better this time. I had the low, and then I added up with the barrier, Safira, go into the Skull Guardian, bring back low. And uh, I did typical plays. I added Sephira to my hand and then I uh, set two and pass. One of them is infinite impermanence and I keep forgetting to like not, I use it, try to use it, attempt to use it during like the worst times because Barrier is out on the field and he has protection and there's going to be other stuff. So you guys are going to see me flip that card a couple times and I'm like so stupid that it doesn't, it can't not work. And he has super polymerization during his opening turn and goes to do Mud Dragon. I was like, damn it so that's that's the first attempt right there of infinite permanence it can't it can't be used uh so yeah I, it's super volley man i'm not gonna lie that it, it works i had it in my in my opening field too so i had it for my mud dragon out and um 
what happened was is that I was trying to do more plays here, but uh, he has like the brilliance and then he sums that glow, uh, uses low to go into Link Karibo and links those two to SP Little Knight. And I don't have an SP Little Knight, so that's a bit unfortunate. I tried to use Infinite Impermanence, but I forgot that he used Mud Dragon to call Dark, so I cannot target any Darks. Uh, so, uh, or he was going to attempt it or something like that. And then um, banished a couple stuff. I, I really can't remember exactly what happened in this part of the video here, but uh, I had a low, so I used low, uh, set Brilliance, summoned out Cerevis from my hand, or no, I think I summoned out from the deck, I'm sorry, with uh, Brilliance, and then uh, I attacked, did a couple damage there, then it became his turn, he summons back out the SP Little Knight, summons out the uh, Mud Dragon, uh, destroys my uh, low, and then goes to main phase two, and this is where he does a couple plays, uh, summons out the Sephira, searches out, um, I believe, I want to say Skull Guardian, oh no, um, yeah, yeah, okay, summons out the Skull Guardian, and I did something to summon out my own Skull Guardian, I can't remember what, oh, I did Cerevis, I did Cerevis' effect to bounce it back, summon out Skull Guardian, and then with it, I'm also going to be able to chain, uh, low in my graveyard to bring it back, and then, um, I summon out low from the graveyard, and I think I set barrier, yeah, I set barrier, I go through my plays, and then, um, he's going through his plays as well with the negation, or not, not a negation, but he has the, uh, the low summons out Link Karibo with it because I think I tried to negate it, but then he ends up tributing it so he can bring back Link Karibo. And then um, I do have now the uh, setup of a Skull with 4,100 attack points, so he can't get over. It's already past the battle phase anyways. This is main phase two. And then, um, yeah, he's just making some plays here, trying to do something, but he ends up scooping because he realizes he can't get over it. And my next turn, I'm just going to do a lot more damage. So then we go to game two. He opens up with the Herald of Diviner. And then he does the typical plays with the Herald of Diviner using Trias and the Tributing. Somebody got low, sets up the barrier, gets a couple plays. I use Drone Lockbird, and that ends up biting me because he uses uh, Triple Tactics Talents and searches my hand. Sends back my uh, Saphira back to my deck and sees I have Super Polymerization and plays around that. He's going to play around this, and he's going to do it so brilliantly here because... Uh, he's not going to end off with two monsters of the same attributes or anything like that. And he's going to be playing around Super Polymerization, and I top deck another Super Polymerization. And it was, like, so frustrating. And um, you're going to see that he's just going to get this one. He's going to get game three, and you're just going to see him, like, go uh, juggle around only leaving off with, like, one monster or monsters with not the same types, not the same attributes, none of that, and just doing some damage. And then I am just have to take it. I have to take it. He summons out Dino Mundo, and he does uh, shuffle back a Super Polymerization. Uh, the other one is another Super Polymerization, and he's just attacking me. And I'm like, I'm having the worst luck drawing cards. Like, I literally draw Ghost Bell. That is the only monster I can actually summon, and I just summon it in defense. I'm just like, this is uh, ridiculous. I had nothing to, nothing to use, nothing to gain here, and I was just... I was going to lose this one, so it was just a no-brainer here. Like, my opponent got the better hand, and he had the better setup. He was playing very... Uh, he was playing around Super Polymerization, and I had to give him a plot for that. So, yeah, uh, Geo ended up getting this game, and then I just ended up losing. But, hey, it was a fun game. It was a fun mirror match, and I really enjoyed it. The best thing to do is you can try, if you got a good hand for it, you can try Oh, so much love. <laughs> so Locals was fun. It was very interesting playing with the branded version. But after playing the deck for a while, I just kind of noticed that the branded didn't really do all that much for me. Like, it was cool idea, but I guess like, since you're not playing the Jalgen Lock and it just wasn't really uh, doing as much as I wanted it to, I always cited this out. And it was just like one of those things that was like, you know, it was cool on paper. And then I seen, you know, some of the regionals, I think it was like regionals that had a branded variant of it. But they had the Jalgen lock and some of them, um, you know, it works out great, but I don't have that. And I don't know if that's like, you know, all oh, that's the reason why this deck didn't do as well with the branded package. Because it did great when it was just a standalone voiceless voice deck with hand traps, you know. It worked out very well. And uh, after I sided these, I had like four opening slots. So I was able to put in like anything into my, uh, from the extra deck, side deck into the main deck. So it was just like, unfortunately, it didn't perform as well as I wanted it to. So I might just end up cutting it. And because even the extra deck takes up a lot of slots, that's five extra deck cards. And then like, I might just move these nine cards, just take them out and put something like, uh, let's see, maybe I might put in like effect veiler into the main deck, maybe put a pre prep back in there so I can have like three of those and then have those. And maybe even the uh, ghost spells, ghost spells, I didn't see it at all i used ghost spell i put it into the side deck during the final game uh the final round of the tournament but i did not see it at all during that mirror match i was kind of hoping like you know they try to use lows effect because they'll do chain one skull guardian chain two low uh, i did not see i did not see ghost spell whatsoever so uh yeah it really didn't do so well 
there but i might end up just putting uh dd crows instead because i feel like that can be a little bit better that might be a little bit better because i could just banish the low instead of just like negating it because if they do a chain blocking uh yeah at least i can banish that but then i could also banish some other stuff like a garunix or really anything that needs something in the graveyard to perform there so like yeah maybe i might move for dd crow instead and then for the extra deck, like, you know, changing things up, I might go back to the original like, kind of package I had where I had the Link Karibo, a Dark. This Lila, Lila would have done really cool during the mirror match. I think this would have been potentially there if I had it and I could have taken one of their cards from the graveyard, one of their voiceless cards, because they're all light. And I think that would have been really cool to pull off, but it did not do it because I didn't have it. Then uh, one Celine and then one Access Code Talker. Uh, Danny was borrowing this for the tournament, so I didn't have it, but it was cool because I wasn't even using it. And then also when uh, trading with Danny, uh, I'm sorry, trading with Aaron earlier in the video, I did get one of the Odd Eyes Pendulum Grab Dragon. I'm debating putting that in because I see people taking out uh, a second Cerevis, so they could have like one Odd Eyes Pendulum and one Cerevis. So these would be your uh, ritual lineups of these cards. So I mean, maybe we'll just have to try it out, play test a little bit, and see how well it does. But yeah, the deck was good. I liked it. Uh, I got. I ended up getting seventh place. I don't know how the pairings works there because I was one of the undefeateds there. And I got bumped all, all the way down to 7 after losing that last one. So uh, it is what it is, I guess. But yeah, the deck really is a lot of fun to play. I liked it. And I like the innovations that I have. It just did not do well for me. It didn't really sit well playing the brand. So I ended up just citing it out a lot. I think I'm just probably going to cut it for the next video. And just open up my extra deck a lot more to the things that I just showcased to you guys. And maybe I'll try this uh, Pendulum Graph Dragon out. Because um, I was playing against Danny after the tournament was over. We hit up a uh, an eatery. And then we just played over there for a while and I had this in there and it worked out nicely um but and then there was also times where I kind of missed having the other Cerevis because I had the other Cerevis in my graveyard I don't have Radiance and then it's just like I don't know um so I'll I'll, de I'll debate it back and forth of which ones I'm going to have in there and maybe for the next video it was just going to be a pure voiceless voice card uh, deck yet again which I'm completely fine with I absolutely love this deck it's been a lot of fun playing this at locals but if there's any other versions of this deck you guys might want me to try out let me know in the comment section down below I know there is a Necros version but I kind of want to look into that to see if it's actually worth it because i think it was only one necros version that i saw but i don't know how it works i don't know what the game plan of that is but i think that also runs chaos angel and i'm not gonna buy a chaos angel i don't even have an sp little knight so uh, i'll have to i'll have to think about it but yeah guys that's gonna wrap it up for the video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this content please hit the like button if you did be sure to subscribe to the channel for more upcoming content and once again comment down below what kind of upgrades i should put into the deck what things do you think i should like experiment with a little bit more or should i give branded a second chance and actually when i get sanctifier put in the Jalgen lock in there because i would be happy to do it again it was just like I just had a bad first experience with this and just citing it out and all that. So maybe I'll give it a second go uh, when Sanctifier gets here, if it gets here, and then uh, just go from there, you know. So uh, let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll see you all in the next video.